Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, so which way would you like to go? Let's go that way. Yeah. Okay, uh, that opens up into a another hallway, and you're not seeing any signs of life. Okay. I'll look around the corner. And uh, you just see that the hallway is, continues, and uh, there's two doors down at the end of the hall. Do you hear any noises at all? Um, from the very end of the hall, uh, You can hear, um, it sounds like it might be a horse. <laughs> of course, of course. Oh, well, I hear a horse. Or... <laughs> I hear a horse. I hear, uh, I hear something coming from down the hall, and it all sounds like a horse. I'll move down the hall, hopefully, I'll get jumped and open the door see it's in there. Okay, as you, uh, Draculich. <laughs> <laughs> I was saying that all weekend. Okay, as you open the door, um, you see, um, uh, two sets of double doors, uh, open in, open in this wide chamber. Uh, it's large enough for a carriage to be parked inside. Uh, you see spare wheels and the rusted remains of a small forge showing or uh, show that one was once housed here. Uh, you see two horse stalls occupying the far end of the room and one of the stalls does indeed hold a mare. And it, it's clearly agitated and it's stamping and shuffling back and forth. Um, its ribs are clearly visible. I'll look at it in the fed in a while. Uh, yes, uh, you can tell that it is clearly starving and dehydrated. Well, wow, there's a severely dehydrated and hungry horse in here. We should probably consider letting it go. That's what I was thinking. Does it make a move to attack me? Uh, no, but, um, you know, it's very aware that you're in the room, and I don't want to say the horse is hostile, but you know, the horse is very cautious about you. <laughs> okay, I throw open the double doors right where I'm standing and back away to see if he wants to run free. Unless it's tied up. And the horsey runs out through the gate. And, um,. Let's see, Darius, you never went in the room, did you? Uh, I have not gone in yet. Uh, with the horse gone, I guess I would go in. And Damon wasn't with us at the stables in town, was he? Uh, that's where we got introduced. That's yeah. right. Um, 
So, Damon, uh, as the horse is running out, you would have recognized that it had a brand on it, which was a winged loop. And you remember that it matches um, the brand from the ledger, you know, the one taken by the Dark Rider when he left Thrushmore. Okay, I'll refer that to the group. So, uh, looks like one of the horses from that stable I was tied up in. Ah, so, looks like this is, was the Dark Rider's final stop. He probably, if the horse was starving, he's probably left it there for a while, or, you know, he just didn't care for it all on the trip down. Probably not. I'm just hoping he didn't have another horse here waiting. True. I'll search around the tables for any clue. Um, you're not finding anything of that would be of any value to you in the stables. Huh? When the horse is gone, we know the the people you're pursuing is at least one of them's been here. Maybe he's still here somewhere. Finish checking the rest of his floor and then try to find a way upstairs. Sounds like a plan. Hmm. Okay. Um, as you open that door, um, this chamber holds uh, crates and sacks of food. Um, they are very old and have largely disintegrated over the years. Does it look like anyone's been in this room for a while at all recently? Um, does anybody have a survival? I'd even take a perception on that. I'm like a negative two to both. Oops. I meant that for the tower. I can remember. Nah, that's good. Um, Darius, uh, you can't see um, that there's been clear signs of a struggle recently in this room. Like, uh, Within the past couple of days. Interesting. I'll relay that. And, uh, however, it's it's impossible to determine how many people were involved and who won. Okay. All right. Uh, no. oh, Darius, with your perception, as you're walking out of the room, um, you see something hidden among the, the discarded rubbish in the room. And it's a uh, saddle bag. And I'll go check it out. Okay. Um, Within side of it, within the saddle bag, you find a small wooden crate packed with straw that retains an impression of the object that was once stored within it. Um, Which would be what we were looking for, right? You can tell. Um, You can tell it's about the same size as the um, effigy that was stolen from the university. Uh, there's no sign of the idol itself, um, but there is a small scrap of parchment in the bottom of the saddle bag, and in scrawling handwriting, it says, "Ask Lucas." about the raven's head. 
Ask Lucas about the raven's head. I'm trying to remember if we've come across any Lucas's. Well, I don't remember any. Um, Alright. We can at least um, make it out of it. With Lucas... I'm thinking, uh, one of the town spokes, or even the mayor, or both, had, um, talked about strangers didn't come to town, except, uh, yeah, Gast Gaster Lucas, he was an importer, uh, he's staying in town trying to set up some business deals. Uh, so the name does ring a bell. We'll have to head back to town after this if we don't find any other more promising leads. Or the child. Okay. Um, and the next room, um, this room is completely empty except for the wooden frame of a uh, bed. Okay. Yeah, you're, there's nothing in there other than the wooden bed frame. Hmm. Are you ready for this door, Damon? Yeah, I'm probably gonna blow it up in my face. Yeah, I'll open it. <clears throat> uh, and you find an old privy that has not been used for many years, and the chamber pot is empty. I don't know if it was full. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking that. So it's just a barren room of an empty chamber pot? Mm, that is correct. I think it's open that door. Oh, we didn't actually search this room. We just got a description of it. Gee, I think there was something on the altar. I can't remember now. Okay, uh, you are back in the central hall, um, and once again, you all have realized that the pillars and columns in this room are not carved stone. Uh, it's like they built the house around Stonehenge. This is an ancient stone circle. Let's look on top of the thing, the stone metal, or is it just a giant pillar? Uh, yes, uh, they are uh, just giant pillars. Um, Yeah, Should let's see. The the dome rises about 30 feet to its apex. Um, the balcony itself is only about 10 feet off the ground floor. Um, someone want to throw a religion check? And 
Darius, um, you notice uh, on several of the columns that there are weathered symbols carved into the rock and you know that they are related to Shub Nigaruth is one of the um, old ones and uh, you can tell that the uh, large stone the large stone in the center of the room was the original sacrifice stone um, and that's uh, all you can see without actively searching the room All right, I will actively search the room. I'll help, even though I'm going to roll like crap when I do. <laughs> roll them dice, gentlemen. Let's see if you find... <laughs> That's never good. Well, uh, Damon can't even find the room. <laughs> find the potatoes. <laughs> Get those ones out there early. Uh, yeah, he rolled a two minus two. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you and there's you and Lydia uh, do find a hidden compartment near the base of the stone altar. I'll take a closer look at it and see if I see any indication that it's trapped. Uh, you're not finding uh, any signs of being trapped. Um, uh, you notice that it looks like it may have been recently opened, you know. Um, it's more noticeable than what it should be. Gotcha. Uh, you know, like uh, disturb the dust and the cracks and so forth. Uh, I will open it up then. There's probably nothing left, but it's obviously worth checking. Okay, uh, you see the strange Ovid object? Uh, it's uh, made of some hard brown material. It has a rough texture and it has dozens of tiny pores in the surface. And uh, you are welcome to make a knowledge nature. Damn. Uh, you identify it as some sort of seed pod. Um, and while you're studying it, um, you are able to confirm that it's no, no seed pod of any plant known about in nature. So this is either a brand new discovery or it's outer worldly. That can't be good. Ooh, if it's a new discovery I can name it. So you, you said it was some type of seed? Could this be what they've been planting in those people in their heads for? Uh hopefully not. I'm assuming it's fairly big, that it in itself is probably not realistically something you could plant in someone's head. Uh, yeah, it, it's at least the size of your fist, or bigger. Yeah. And, um, Lydia, uh, you would have been detecting magic, um,
the stone. Uh, get my directions right. Uh, you can tell the presence of magic coming from the stone in the northeast corner. Interesting. And uh, if you want to throw an Arcana check to identify it. Uh, you identify it as being a... Oh, sorry. Uh, you didn't identify it as anything. <laughs> Uh, Darius, once again, Mr. Know-it-all, uh, does identify it as being a phase door. A phase door? A phase door. Do I know what that is, or do I just kind of, like, have heard the term? I assume it's, you know, some sort of door we can pass through. Or as far as a being. Um, yeah, uh, you would probably at least know that it's some sort of magical door that will um, phase shift you somewhere. Maybe that's the egg or see this one. Yeah, do I know anything like um, how you would go about using a phase door, or is that still something you need to figure out? Like, do I know if there's normally a key or some sort of ritual you have to use to activate it, or does it, you know, you can just sort of walk through it, type thing? Uh, or does it vary? Uh, it varies. There, You can set triggering conditions for the door, but the uh, conditions can be as simple or as elaborate as you desire. But they do have to be based upon observable actions or qualities. You can't say open the door for every fighter that comes walking by. Gotcha. And I assume that it's no noticeable when it's open? Like it glows or a doorway appears or something like that, or does it, would there be an observable phenomenon to tell that yes, the door is open? Um, yeah, I'm gonna say it has, uh, a, you know, like the wormhole effect. <laughs> Okay. And if you happen to be inside it when it's closed, they it throws you out one of the two ends. All right, maybe we should search more through here to see if we can find a way to trigger it. Okay. Maybe some notes or something. Did we finish this for? I can't remember. Uh, we have. Yeah, you got the back room. And I'm going to throw a token on that portal so we don't forget about it. Uh, 
Okay, um... Can I get you guys to make a perception check? Okay, um, as you're standing outside the door, um, for a moment you hear the whimper of a of an infant and it's followed by a shushing sound and then you're not hearing anything was it coming from this room uh yes it is coming from that room yeah draw my sword and kick in the door Okay, uh, let's roll for initiative. <laughs> and delete the horse from the combat tracker. should have come back for revenge <laughs> uh, absolutely uh, as you kick in the door uh, you can tell that whatever furnishings were once in this room have been used for fuel for the fireplace um, you see a plain wooden bench um, beneath the window uh, a single lit lantern and it's been hooded so the light doesn't shine outside of the chamber and inside of it uh, you can see a gentleman who is wearing the robes of a vicar and a um, cult member um, the vicar is holding a baby in his arms and uh, Lydia you are up first sir okay ma'am Church, grab David and fling him into the room. <laughs> just out of curiosity, are you going to tell him you do that or you, do you just do that? <laughs> well, he gets to make a free attack when he goes in, so I assume that he knows what's happening, otherwise, I'm just, you know, using him as a bad <laughs> ram. He's going ahead first. He's used to only once before. So you get, you get a free attack against the uh, guy you're upset there. Is this guy holding the child? Nope. Uh, no, the cultist there. is not. Garrick is. Garrick, yeah. and do they have the same runic markings on these rows as the other guys did? Is that sweet? Uh, you're, uh, the vicar has the same, same on there. Uh, Yes, uh, they're they're both from the church. Okay, I'm just gonna say, you know, I'm on that child. We're taking it back to its parents. You guys don't sacrifice it to the foul ritual. I'm hitting these guys.
Nice opening attack. And Lydia, you're up. Uh, no, I'm done. I probably won't throw a bomb at the baby. That will be a first. <laughs> I'm going to cast, or I'm going to quaff um, a long arm extract. And but I'm not going to step into the room yet. Um. Garrick is going to put down the baby and yeah he knew you were coming so he would already had his morning star so yeah he's, he's going to drop the baby Take a five foot step. Actually, drop it. the baby. To yield, you come, the, you come for the child. You do not have to die here today. Don't do anything. I'm just gonna smack the crap with this guy in front of me. Okay, I'm smacking. Him. You fucker. You fucker. <laughs> I turn the camera. Go. Stand down, my friend. All <laughs> I want is a child. Well, let's see. Yeah. You want to bring Bob into...
There's the baby. Uh, I will move in and pick up the baby. Okay. Um. I'm going to look at Darius and be like, you bomb this baby, I swear to God. If I want to bomb the baby, I will have already bombed the baby. I will move in and just stab at uh, Garrick. And I miss twice. Okay, uh... Lydia, are you affected by channel negative energy? Yeah, of course. Just making sure. So is the baby. <laughs> you want to be a baby killer winter? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> it would be the false best. Uh, yeah, he kind of got me, damn it. Oh, well. <laughs> That's okay, I got two more I could hit instead. <laughs> and... He's gonna take a five foot step. Will you step up and step up on him? Oh, you just step on up. I said you gave a choice. You should have surrendered peacefully, my friend. Try to take him alive if you can. Oh, I'll do it. Okay, uh, just take him alive. I guess I'll have to do this at non lethal. Do I do a negative four for non lethal damage? Or negative four attack. attack. Actually, wait, that one won't hit. One second, let me adjust that. I rolled the wrong one there. Oh, I missed him. I will withdraw. Withdraw. That's. Are you leaving the baby? <laughs> now that, that well, no, I guess I'm preferring to take him alive. Hmm.
I will throw more than ball on that. Wow, he thinks things are getting just a little hot in here now. And he starts to cast a spell. Spell check, can I identify it? Spellcraft. <laughs> um, yes, uh, by God, you can just about identify any spell you want with that roll. Um, <clears throat> You can tell that he is casting ice ice storm. All right, what? I'll call out a warning to Stephen. It's a very weird spell for him to cast. And or am I thinking of the wrong spell? Uh, I think this entire room is going to get frosted. Very yeah, himself included. <laughs> well, if he kills himself, we can't question him. Uh, that is true. He probably won't kill himself, he'll just be hurt. Okay, so he cast it, and let's see. That's a 15 foot room and a 20 foot cone, so it would hit everybody. And I have nobody targeted now. And everyone takes uh, 3d6 uh, bludgeoning damage. Seriously. And 2d6 a cold. It would also provoke Damon from casting that. And. Oh, yeah, you're right. Go ahead and take your AoE there, Damon. On my attack? Yep. yep. So this guy just hit me with a spell. Am I still trying to keep him alive? He's provoking you from casting. This is an attack of opportunity, not your turn. Yeah, just go ahead and make your attack, I would say. Ha! And he did make his concentration check. <laughs> oh, he's got a lot of points, too. And let's see, the ice storm lasts for uh, quite a while, longer than he will. I think it's around 12. And he's going to take a five foot step. Oh, I use my raccoon, so I can't take a step up. It doesn't matter anyway, does it? Yeah, you're within range of... It's been your turn since your foot foot's up anyways, but you don't need to. <laughs> okay, it doesn't take your raccoon fire, so I just step up. Okay, okay well, we want him alive. Do we still want him alive? If at all possible, yep. Mostly. Well, you've got some uh, lethal amount already, so even if you hit him for lethal now, he'll just go unconscious. That was all mine with the negative four. So it's all non lethal wound. 
Uh, you didn't actually change it. No, he left. That's what he's done. He said he want to come out this. Oh. I do, I do it, or did he use Yeah, guys, I'm going to uh, disconnect from TeamSpeak and reconnect. Okay. See you next week. User disconnected from your channel. Yeah, that's something he has. Disconnected. That wasn't fucking funny, Vok. <laughs> Connected. Channel switched. That almost Who's wasn't that? funny. <laughs> oh, I was reconnecting and, <clears throat> you know, okay, wait a minute, something should have happened by now. Okay, is it going to connect or not? So, anyway, I think I can hear you all a little better now. Yeah. And then all that is non-lethal, so, so we shouldn't be dying. But. Hey, yeah, not a problem. So, anyway, uh, he's unconscious on the ground. Uh, Lydia has got the baby. So what do we do with this guy? Take him back to town so we can get the baby over here? Or do we tie him up and ask him questions here? Or get the baby to safety as soon as possible. So you're saying I should have probably killed the baby? <laughs> um, what's everyone think you do? You should probably trust him up with attending and um wait for him to come back on his torches. Take out the fifty feet of rope I have and pretty much modify it. His arms, his legs, which hot time. Okay. I'd love to check out the baby and make sure that it's okay. Um, yeah. while you're tying up, um, Garrick, um, you and Lydia are looking at the baby, and she appears to be in perfect health. magic the baby and you are not detecting any magic coming from the baby oh all right i'll, I'll just hand it there then say Meh, whatever i yes uh, i was hoping it was some kind of ancient relic i pretty, pretty much the baby so you lost interest they shake down garrick of everything he has let's put it in a pile of them so we can see if he has any information we need Before we before he wakes up, so he doesn't have anything to use against us. Well, let's see what Garrick did have on him. I bet he has some magic stuff. And while that's happening, I'll use channel positive energy to lay in hands to kill me and Garrus. Uh, he's wearing, um, underneath his robe, he's got plus one scale bell. He's got a plus one morning star. 
and a ring of protection plus one. No other information on them at all? Uh, no. Not as far as, like, uh, plans or code words or anything like that. No map with a big X on it? You couldn't get that lucky. I'll look around this room for any information that I know. While we wait for the way to go. Little Lydia, you may want to come in here for head of protection. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, anything that could be burnt in this room has went through the fireplace. Um, and eventually um, he starts to regain consciousness. And he's uh, <sighs> looks up and you know he's uh, very pissed off over being defeated and being tied up. Imagine he is. Uh, what are you doing with that child with her? It'd be easier if you just try to be diplomatic with him to say, it'd be easier if he just tells you information now. So we don't have to take you into the authority. So we can, so we can see you cooperate. The authorities don't do any worse to you than we've already done. Yeah, uh, we were trying to, uh, you know, uh, get a uh, fostering started, trying to uh, get in contact with the neighbors so we could turn the child over to them. Where are the neighbors? Where do they reside? Unfortunately, he gives you the same answer as everybody else. Down the bay. Um, very few of the townspeople have ever really been where the neighbors live. Uh, the neighbors generally uh, meet them at, um, I think it's the church, where all this takes place, where they swap them out for the fostering. Why are the neighbors so secretive? Uh, you would uh, have to ask them that. Uh, I, I personally have never seen one. You arrange to give your children to people you've never so much as seen? Uh, it's a uh, long-standing tradition in this area. It's part of what brings us uh, our prosperity. Doesn't seem to be working these days. And I gotta ask, what is with all the bodies in your your temple back in town? With exploded heads. Uh, 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 well, um, why does your religion seem to be corrupted to an, an evil god, a good god? Wow, my friend, you, you can speak to us now, the child's safe. Maybe we can help help your town and your people, or do you truly just think? Sacrifice and blowing up people's heads is the easiest way of doing things.
Uh, yes, that is the easy way of doing things, and, you know, um, the cover of, um, give me just a second. Uh, we are truly, um, Whichever God they worship now is a cover for the true God of um, Dagoin. Let's see if I can find it real quick. Oh, is it the Demon Lord Dagon? Yeah, Dagon. Yeah, the uh, the church is. Um, and is it Gazra? That's the cover. Or was it someone else? Uh, yeah, uh, Gazra is the cover, and Dagon is the actual deity that they're secretly wa worshipping. So, uh, what's this have to do with the writer that came here with, uh, what was that idol you guys are looking for? Um, I can't remember his name now. Sea sausage, episode, the sausage. Sea sausage, effigy. Yes. I. Uh, it was a component that we needed. Needed for what? Uh, for the, uh, Carrion Crown. What is Carrion Crown? And give me just a second, let me... Grab the last book that's got the poem in it. And, um, you know, he's, uh, kind of reluctant to, um, tell you. <laughs> Look at it again, trying to be all diplomatic while I'm going. Well, you, you're, apparently your faith in this Dagon has not gotten you anywhere. Nothing but suffering, and you're now tied up. Maybe you should return back to the fate you had before, and, and the better your odds and chances of your life. Just tell us everything you know. It may save your life and the lives of people you may love or care for. Um, and he explains that, you know, they're, um, kind of doing some business dealings with, uh, the Whispering Way. Um, the Carrion Crown itself is actually an elixir, and it's a potion of lichdom that the Whispering Way hopes to use to bring back the Whispering Tyrant. Whoa. And yes. they have been collecting uh, certain artifacts and certain items in order to 
create this elixir. And where are those artifacts now? Uh... He can't say for sure because truly uh, they were just responsible in helping with uh, the effigy. And you, does he still have the effigy? Uh, the vicar may have it. Oh, he's not the vicar. Uh, Vic, uh, Voltron. Uh, this is another vicar. Does he know where he is? Voltron? Uh, yes, we were told to stay here, and he's, uh, somewhere upstairs in the house. And what was with the Mars Giant? I was here. Uh, protection. <laughs> uh, we paid her, paid her to uh, help protect the house. Why were you trying to start up the foster day? You guys want no, to I, 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 I'm sorry. Uh, let me retcon that for a moment. Uh, the Marsh Giant is actually a... Um, she's a lo loyal follow follower of Dagon. And, uh, you know, often serves uh, Voltron as a bodyguard and enforcer. Any other bodyguards and enforcer of this place? Um, I, I, yeah, the only per the only other person that we come with would have been uh, Father Voltron. And how did he get upstairs if the bridge, if the stairs are collapsed? Well, I uh, I don't know. He uh, probably climbed. Uh, you know, he's not without his own resources. Well, is there anything else you guys think we should do? I don't have any other questions. It's just one thing. Why are you guys trying to get the fostering out? Do you want something from the neighbors? Yeah, we want prosperity back from our town. Yeah, if you didn't join the Whispering Way and serve, serve Dagon, yeah, probably would still have prosperity. Well, we don't. We just have business dealings with the Whispering Ways. Only to benefit our end. Yeah, well, how's that benefit going now? Your town is sucking. Your catches were drying up. Worshiping evil and darkness never brings you brings you light or good in this world. Well, you know, to each his own, and when, uh, when our god assumes control, and, you know, he just goes into the typical cultish rhetoric, and talks to you about the virtues of, uh, Dagon, and, you know, why you should join. <laughs> He's, he's gonna ask if you've ever had Kool Aid and if you would like to try some. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Adam. Unfortunately for you, my friend, 
I'm pretty sure Diagon does not look well on people who fail. And he's just kind of quiet at that because he realizes that, you know, he is defeated and you're probably right. Okay, well, we can't leave this guy conscious, so I'm going to just knock him out. Let's secure him to something in this room. Okay, you managed to uh, secure him. And I'm pretty, okay. pretty confident that he will not be escaping. Hey, we got a decision to make. We got a baby. And then the priest is, the vicar is probably upstairs. How do we handle this? I don't want the baby to die. It is a conundrum. If we take the baby back to town, there's a good chance we'll lose the vicar. Yeah. <clears throat> I can uh, put the baby on Bob and send Bob back to town. <laughs> I knew Bob was going to get stuck babysitting. Oh, no, do you trust Bob with a baby? Hey, Bob might be a chicken, but he's got intelligence. And he was there when we met the parents, wasn't he? He's here with me right now. I mean, if you can get them back to the parents safely. I'm sure Bob will handle it. He can fly. Chickens can't fly. This chicken can. Chickens and Pathfinder can fly, as long as they <laughs> land their movement. <laughs> so they can't end the movement in the air. <laughs> so, you're saying they do like 30 foot hops? <laughs> well, he's only got 20 foot movement speed, so it would be 40 foot hops because it would be double move. <laughs> but I mean, 40 feet of flight is not nothing to scoff at. Like, he can get wherever he needs to go, he can get away if people try to surround him. That's true. And do you think you can securely tie a uh, 30 month old to the back of Bob? I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not very reassured. Don't worry, Bob will be fine. Yeah, we're concerned about the baby, though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there are some guarantees we can get her back there safely, Bob, I would say to her. But all right, I I will cast a web spell, and then I will rip off some webs and t use that to tie the baby to Bob. <laughs> <laughs> That lasts for over an hour. That should be enough for him to get back to town. <laughs> oh, okay. Did not see it going that way. Okay, so that's what you want to do. That's what you've done. You've secured the baby to Bob with webbing. <laughs> uh, Maybe a note. Yeah, I was going to ask, is there a note? <laughs> yeah. And saying that the temple is now worshiping the demon prince Dagon. Be careful of your people. <laughs> that that reminds me of uh, when the game goes for playing Bloodborne and get the. Uh, <laughs> there's a baby that you have to kill to get its umbilical horde. And he's like, it's okay, guys. It's okay. It's demon baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay to kill demon baby. <laughs> So, you're sending a baby back to town on the back of a chicken, carrying a note saying that the temple 
has been uh, <clears throat> polluted by worshippers of Dagon. That sounds like a reliable source to me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this is going to go weird. <clears throat> well, uh, I'm sure it will be talked about in town. <laughs> if anything, that baby's not going to have an interesting story for the rest of his life. Uh, and I'm assuming you're going to say, hey, this is the Toby's baby, please return it. Uh... Yeah. Don't go just for sending him back on the back of a chicken. Yeah, because we, we're just no guarantee we could leave here about this guy trying to nuke this from somewhere. Yeah, uh, that is true. So Bob takes off, rock, 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 and off Bob and the baby go. <laughs> okay. Shall we try to find a way to the second floor? Uh, yep. For the hell of it, I'm just going to knock on the stone portal. Okay, uh, you can climb uh, the outside up to the second floor where there's rubble, or uh, you can try the portal. We don't have any idea how to activate it yet, I don't know. Uh, no, you do not. Yeah, we better try to climb up the outside. Hmm, yeah, might as well. Hey, I remember climbing, that'll help. Yes, that will. <laughs> it will help a lot. And there you are. Um, as you all climb up, uh, you enter into the library. And Naturally, portions of the ceiling and the floor of the chamber have collapsed as well as a part of the eastern wall. Um, the floor sags alarmingly. Um, bookshelves are still holding the moldering remains of um, paper and parchment along the walls. You guys want to check this area for any information or any of any this? Yep. Yeah. No, that might be going to do bad. Put a little minor potion here. Yeah, myself. Not minor. Whatever I have. Not moderate. <laughs> okay, so you are uh, checking the bookshelves and so forth? Yep. Okay, uh, you let's see. As you're searching through the books for anything of interest, and for the most part, it if the book did have an interesting title, its contents are so ruined that, you know, it's absolutely worthless. And you're lucky if the book doesn't fall apart in your hands. And, Darius, um, as you look around the books, um, you catch some movement. 
out of the bottom of your eye coming from the uh, southern part of the room. Oh my god, more kick swarms. And... Uh, yeah, let's um, go ahead and head to work and uh, tell you what, guys, uh, let's take 10. This is a good place to do it. Okay. All right, we'll see you shortly. User disconnected from your channel.